Dan Uncraft. Woo! <laughs> Talking Did about intro? <laughs> worms and <laughs> my goodness, <laughs> I have such respect. The authority. Cool, cool. Oh, sorry. All right, so let's get back to this. Take the derivative, right? Because what is the derivative? It's the slope, right? So it's the delta y over delta x, right? Or dy over dx. But to take the derivative of this, first we need to bring this guy up, right? So there's a there's a one right here, right? Hold up, hold up. Wait a second. Fuck. Wait, you want me to restart? Or? No. Go ahead. Okay. So there's a 1 right here. Okay. We're going to bring it up. So we're going to say y equals 3x to the negative 1. Does that make sense? Right? One we didn't change anything. We just made it look different. Right? One negative. Well, remember, negative exponents bring us down or bring us up. Right? Remember? Yeah. Negative exponents. Fractional exponents are the square roots, right? Negative exponents bring us down or put us up, okay? All right, so. Hold up, wait a second. Let me write that down. It's not my way you're standing in the way of the I'm not standing in no one's way. You're tall. If you can't oh, see past me, there's no one's wrong. Down. I'm not that fat. <laughs> Don't even say it. All right. Ready? Here we go. What do we do to take the derivative? What? Right? Power rule says take the exponent times the coefficient. So y prime, or in this case we're going to call it dy dx. Okay? Dy. Now, what's negative one times three? Negative three. Okay, and take one away from negative one, and you get negative two. There you go. We got x to the negative two. Okay. Oh. Now let's rewrite that. Okay. Let's rewrite that. So this comes below, right? Sir. So we got dy negative three over dx. Are you having fun trying? Right, Annie. Right. We follow it along, we got it, we did it, good. If you guys can't do this, then shut the fuck up and watch it. Hey, watch the language. We're videoing along. On a video. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So, I'm going to bring this down, right? And I'm going to have negative 3 over what? X squared. There you go. That's our derivative. Now we're able to figure out what our slope is, right? That's our slope. Almost. Almost. Yeah, you know, we gotta. We don't. We need to know. We need to know a point, right? A point. A so point at point. which we're gonna talk about the slope. So where's the point that we're talking about the slope? Uh, negative two. Yes, at x naught, right? So at this point right here, right? Hold up. Let me write that down. That's the point, that's x naught. That doesn't even make sense on my point. <laughs> Wait, what? That x naught equals negative low. 2. What? Right? Hold up. Okay? Now, so at negative 2, we're going to find what's called the tangent line, right? What we need to know the slope. Okay? So we're going to try to find dy mm. and dx. Mm. Okay? Um, so, when we plug in, uh, when we, uh oh, when we plug in dx, right? So where is dx? dx. dx or delta x, right? Negative 1.5. 1.25. How? Mine's negative 1.5. Yeah, negative 1.5 or negative 3 over 2, right? So we're going to plug in for dx. 
So that means dy over dx, and dx is negative 3 over 2, right? Equals what? Negative 3 over x squared, right? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Why does that make sense? Because you're in my way. Now it's going to make more sense. <laughs> dy equals. Oh, and did we plug in our x naught? Because we want to plug in our x naught at the same time, right? How did you? So our x, what's our x value? Negative 2. Question. What is it? Negative 2. Negative 2. And so you want me to change the colors of those things so you see where they're coming from? No, nope, now just don't make no sense. This, what is this? What? Delta X, right? Or I'm not even DX. educated from any of this. DX, we're plugging in right here. DY DX is equal to this, correct? Okay. We have to figure out what dy is to figure out the slope. Okay? So, until we can figure out dy, the only way to figure out dy is to plug in dx. They gave us a dx, so we plug that in. And then we have to plug in your x0 for your x, right? And then we that's, solve. That's, that's where it comes well, we'll put x naught when it's not. It's the x initial. It's the initial point of where you're talking about. It's the point at which we're creating the tangent line. Well, what's the knot in the thing? The knot is the, the zero. Sub zero so means knot. What's the point knot. of putting x to zero on the bottom? There's no it, the point is anytime you see x naught or at the zero on the bottom, that's your initial point. That's where you're starting from. In physics and calculus and everything. Mom, was just replacing the dx with the I know, but that's not what I was asking. I was just asking what that meant. Oh. So x naught or your initial x is always the x sub zero. Okay. So we're starting from right here, and we're going to create. Remember that line, but I don't want to draw the line yet because I don't know what the slope is. We're trying to find out the slope. We have to figure out what dy is. So we have to plug in dx and we have to plug in delta x. Okay? Once you plug in delta x and dx, right? Then you start to solve it. Now, how do I get rid of this? It's being divided by that, right? Um, right? Negative 3 can cancel out the top negative 3, I think. Well, if I multiply both sides by this, wouldn't that get rid of it? Mm -hmm. Get rid of the fraction, right? So if I, in other words, if I multiply oh. this fraction by negative 3 over 2, right? Then that would cancel out the negative 3 over 2. Does that make sense? What I do to one side, do the other. You got to do to the other. So that would be negative three over two. Does that make sense? No. Why? Because you keep standing in the way. Am I in your way right now? Not right now, but when you're teaching it, you stand in the way. Because he's writing. Because well, I'm not invisible. I'm sorry, guys. It's like that's, what he's to say. I, no, that's, that's just what I'm saying. Well, I'm then back saying up, huh? Why it's sit there, where your brother sits. No. Sit anywhere else, no. where I'm not bugging you. I like this spot. And you're bugging me right now. You always bug me. <laughs> All you do well, there you go. Up. Can we keep True. arguing on the phone? Because like everybody's watching us argue on the it's video. Not a phone, it's a camera. You know. Should I call you up? Call me up. Yeah. So it's on the phone. You want to stop talking? So we can sense. keep learning. All right, so what's going on with this? Well, you just got to multiply on both sides, don't you? That's it. So we got dy is equal to what? Negative 9. 
Negative positive, positive, negative positive, is positive, eight. Positive, positive. Positive. So positive nine over. Negative four. Four two. No, four. look, negative times a negative is a. Negative. Positive. It says negative in the other one. Oh, yeah, my phone. Squared, right? Yeah, I forgot. So that's a four, and four times two is? Eight. So dy is nine eighths. Okay? And that's the hardest thing to figure out, really, honestly. Okay? So now they wrote it as nine eighths or 1.125, right? So you could also write this as one point. One two five, correct? Okay, but what's up with the V? Huh? Well, that's or. or. That's or. Oh. So now, how are we gonna draw your line? What's the line gonna be? Right? You need to draw your line. You need what? Dy, dx. Right? That's your slope. Right? So what's the change in x? It's minus two, so we're gonna go from here to here, right? To minus four, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go how, up how much? One point one two five, right? So if we go up from one point two five, right? One point one two five. One two five is half of two five, right? So basically, we're going up to to. We wouldn't go up the full. Uh, one to five, right? So we're gonna go about to, about halfway. Does that make sense? Instead of going all the way back to zero, right? We're actually going about halfway from two five to zero because twelve and a half is half of twenty five. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with that? So we go up one, right? It looks like we're right about here. So we're going up to about here. So that's where R going up is going to. Going up to about right there, okay? And then, then we have our two points. And that's how you create your tangent line, okay? So this is your dy and this is your dx, right? So your dx is how far you came this way, and your D, dy is how far you're going that way, right? Up to this point. Now, what they want to know also, other than this, right? Other than that, they want to know what is the change in y? The change in y is really silly, guys. It's, just, it's not that difficult. The change in y is this. It's basically, you know, what, how much does it change from this point to this point? So in essence, what you're doing is two things. You're gonna plug in to the original function, right? To the original function, not the, not the, the derivative, but to the original function, you're gonna plug in and find the difference so you can find the height, right? And so we're looking for a positive height, right? Yeah. So, I wanna find the difference between these two. Well, this is gonna be the x naught, right? Or at the negative two. So f of negative two, right? And then the other one's gonna be Negative four, right? But that's going to be higher, right? Is it going to be higher? So we want to take this away from that f of negative four, okay? That's all we're doing to find this height. So to get the dy, or the delta y, right? The triangle y, delta y, in order to get that, I'm going to take the value that y is here, and subtract it from the value that y is there. And that's going to tell me this value, which is delta y, okay? That's all. It's not, it's not hard. So we plug them in, 
And, and this is your function. Remember, function of x is equal to 3 over x, right? So it's going to be 3 over negative 4 minus 3 over negative 2. Does that make sense? And a minus and a minus makes a positive. positive. That's where they become the difference. Right? So then we have 3, negative 3 fourths, and we're adding 3 halves. Right? So I gotta change this to, uh, to a fourth, right? So I can add them. So what multiplies 2 to be 4? 2. 2? So 2 over 2. So now I have negative 3 over 4 plus 6 over 4, right? And then what's that difference? What do we get? Are you multiplying or are you... You're adding. <laughs> so it's just 3 over 4. Because negative 3 and 6 gives you what? 3, right? So <clears throat> delta y is equal to 3 fourths or could we give that a decimal? 75. Yeah, 0.75. Okay? My change of x. No, my change of x is negative 3 over 2. Why is that different? The answer? Yeah. Because you on the y, on the y-axis, you use negative 1.25 instead of negative 1.5. You do the one completely wrong. Oh, is it down? It's down lower? Yeah, it's just one down. Oh my bad, my bad. So it's supposed to be at 1.5. So 2 should have been at 1.5. That's my bad. Thank you. So what he's saying is this 2 should have been coming down. My, my curve should have been actually at 0.15. That's why. So when we drew this line, we did things bad. This negative 2 should have been at negative 0.15. When we take one away from that, we would go up halfway between these guys. So it would still be going across the four, but we would only go up to about 